Open your Bibles to 2 Samuel, the sixth chapter. At this time, David, greatest king Israel ever had, he built a, he built a temple in Jerusalem, and finally, man, the ultimate, the Ark of the Covenant was being delivered to that temple. He, he got news of that. It was right around the corner, and then David danced before the Lord with all his might. And the key there in your notes, if you got your Bibles open, underline all his might. With everything in him, he danced before the Lord. And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought the ark of the Lord with shouting and with, with the sound of the trumpet. Now, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, David's wife, looked through a window, underline that, looked through a window, and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. See, understand, it goes on to say, she, and then she ridiculed him, because his, his linen ephod came off that he danced so and she said, what, do you want to be like one of those town, townsmen that are dancing in front of the ma- uh, maid servants? What are, you, what, are you, what are you trying to draw attention? And miss the whole point. But see, there's a big difference between being in the street dancing and being at the window looking critically. See, I'll just tell you, I read that and thought, God... Please forgive me for being in the window looking critically at anybody. I, I normally look at it like, oh, yeah, I, I, I identify with David. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm usually in a vulnerable position, and I'm usually pretty passionate in that vulnerable position. But you know what? I started thinking about McCall, and I started thinking, oh, my gosh. See, being involved and committed in church is under attack today. But it, it always it has been. I've been a Christian for over 40 years, and it always has been. Like the first thing that was said to me after I got saved is, well, you, going, you going to church? I remember I got saved on Sunday morning. On Sunday night, I, I, there was a church service, so I went, to, I went back to church. I remember not even thinking about it, and I walked through the front door of the church, and I thought, whoa, wait a minute, what am I doing? I was here this morning. I'm, 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 I'm coming twice? So you understand I'd never been to church, and now I'm going twice in one day? But see, so people are like, Sheer, what are you doing? And they, they, they threw out some accusations about why I was doing it, my intent, the whole thing. And the... the See, the plan for our life can't be fulfilled from a window. And, and I'm just telling you, you've, we've got to get better. We've got to get stronger. We've got to get so strong that it affects not just the people, around, but masses of people. See, the plan for your life can't be fulfilled unless you're in the street dancing mightily. See, there's a people on the earth today that like like never before who are nervous and tentative and hesitant and withdrawn. I'll just tell you that the... The whole idea of the, the pandemic, what are we going to do? Well, whether or not their intent was to make our population tentative or nervous or hesitant, that's what happened. And I realized that and I thought, oh my gosh, because every time, how many guys love the Holy Spirit? How many guys are full of the Holy Spirit? Let me hear you. Do you understand? Do you understand every time someone encountered the the filling or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, a boldness came about them? I mean a boldness. Every single time. 
And, and I, I, I look at this and I'm thinking, okay, the, the enemy, the prince of the power of the air, the powers that be, are trying to pull us away from that boldness. Well, I can't say anything. It's not my place. But who, who am I to say anything? Let, let me just tell you, I remember I'd been a Christian for m- maybe a month. And it's when I became friends with Jeff and Patsy Perry. And, and, and Jeff Perry was a street preacher at the time. And, and, and there were a few other guys. And what they do is they'd meet on Friday evening in, in an apartment and pray. And what we did is we figured out how much time was, we were going to be on the, on the street ministering to people and preaching. And we'd pray a minute for every minute we were going to be out preaching. So we'd pray for an hour and a half for two hours. And, and at that time, I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I had a prayer language, but it was boiled down to Andalio Kosai. So I said Andalio Kosai for like two hours. So we'd go out in the street. I didn't know the word. I'd been a Christian a month. Just moved to Tulsa. And, and the people, they were, I loved them. They were, but it was different than anything I'd ever experienced in people. And um, we'd go out in the street, and I could lead people to the Lord because I realized anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So you know what? I'm just going to get them to call upon Jesus. So I'd walk up to people. I'd say, look, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Matter of fact, they're here, pray with me. And, and I'll do this. You, you're the person. I, I said, look, I want to pray for you. God, I thank you that you're blessing this guy. As a matter of fact, pray with me. And you guys join me. Father God, I give you my life. I make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I'm trusting you, God. I'm going to heaven, and I'll never smell the scent of hell. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'd say, thank you very much. And they'd be like looking at me like, what are you doing? I, but, it, but that was, I accomplished my mission because that's all I knew. Peter said, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. We, we confess that name, the name above all names. I didn't even know that. So I remember there's people going, oh my gosh, thank you so much. There's a load off me. Can you pray for my marriage? I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't know anything about marriage. I was single at the time. I'm, I'm 22 years old. I didn't know the word. I said, you got to go find a Christian or a minister or something. <laughs> but see, you understand that there, there's always been, it, 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 my initial steps in this was boldness. So, and, and, and let me tell you, it's easy to be bold in the Lord if you keep it simple. But I think what we do now is we get so bold knowledgeable in it, and the Bible says knowledge puffs up, that we overthink it. See, see, most of the principles that we live by are, the media professes them to be bad. And I think we have to look at that, that The norm today is different than, well, wait a minute. And I think about it, I'm 65 years old, so that's some context of, you know, but, but the context is, wait a second, I have to stick by the principles that God's word lays out for us. And the world's not going to like it. But I'll tell you, God is. And like like right now, in America, there's over 7 million men between the ages of 24 and 50 that are unemployed and not looking, not angling for employment or a job. Over 7 million men. See, and we... We, and and I, I, get, I get immigration and all the other things that we talk about, but it's like, wait a second, what's happening? What are, what, 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 what's going on with, our, with the principles? See, and I, I think it's this, and I want to get back to my point here, is we can't play it safe. You can't play it safe. You can't hedge your bet. You, you, I, I'm telling you, there's no fulfillment in that. Playing it safe when our principles are being dismissed is very dangerous. And when I'm talking about 
principles. I'm talking about God's promise. I'm talking about God's word. I'm talking about what's laid out in, in God's word. See, the danger is you don't fulfill God's purpose. And we still, the vast majority, between eight and nine out of ten people that go to church every week in America have no idea what their purpose is. So what we want to do is the, 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 the Gut Sex School of Ministry, we want to help people find your purpose. Man, if that's it, I'm telling you the bell rings and there's fireworks and there's a celebration. But the danger of just, just hedging our bets and playing it safe and, and not truly t- trusting God, not letting anybody know, is you don't fulfill his purpose and you don't impact the people that are on your spiritual account. And that's, this, I know I've got an account in heaven. And I, I'm kind of projecting this on you. So I guess I'll own it. Um, but I know there's people that are on my account that have, that have crossed my path that it's like, wait a second, what a, man, what's, what's he doing now? And I'll run into somebody, I'll be like, oh my gosh. If there's ever been a time to be bold in the things of God, it's now. And we're not a day late and a dollar short. I'm telling you, it's now. And it's not about politics. It's about the kingdom. It's about, just go back through the last six or eight weeks of messages. It's all been about the kingdom. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom is at hand. It's within arm's reach. You know, it's interesting, but there's there's a quote and a part of it. Helen Keller said, life is daring or it's nothing. And I think about that, I thought, oh my gosh. And the daring part is in the kingdom is we, we take a stand. And then having all this, done all the stand, we stand there for. See, and, and I'm just telling you, now is the time. I am not an alarmist, but I'm telling you the alarm's going off in my heart. We can't play it safe. We have to be bold. We have to be daring. We have to be courageous. 365 times in the word, the word says, don't fear. Be courageous. Only be courageous. Don't be afraid. See, you are coming into a time of incredible increase. See, let me just tell you, okay, the children of Issachar who understood the times, the directors were to fight, that's who we need to be. And I'm not saying we got to find the the top 1%. I'm telling you, the entire entire church, if we all buy into the concept, to the notion, to the principle that, man, we're men and women of valor. We understand the times. We know what's going on. We're not going to live in the darkness anymore. The light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Jesus said, man, I'm the light of the world. And he turned and said, you're the light of the world. See, we're coming into a time of incredible increase. Your expectations need to match what you're hearing here today. Your expectations have to be through the roof. I'm telling you, now's the time. Now's the time for you to take a stand and believe God. Incredible increase. Is it going to be comfortable? Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to give us comfort. But you know what? We're stepping into new ground. There is huge transfers of wealth right now in the, on the earth. Do you know that? And I'm looking at it thinking, what's going on? What's going on? And, the, and what does the word say? The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous, laid up for the just. Anybody righteous in here? Anybody just in here? Let me tell you, there's a huge transfer, and let me just help you. Man, now's the time. It's an incredible time of increase, of overflow. I, I personally only crave what courage gives. I hate it. I hate it when I'm passive. Thank God I'm married to a godly woman that, that gives me a look when I get passive. We're not going to ride anything out here. We're not going to do that. That's not our future. 
We're not going to play it safe. It's time to escalate and elevate everything about God in our lives. You know, it, it's interesting. Here's another quote. I, I, don't, I usually don't quote. I don't know that I've ever quoted Helen Keller before, but St. Augustine said this, without God, we cannot. Without us, God will not. So we're not a people. The, my doctrine isn't, God, what are you doing? I just know that the word says, eye hasn't seen nor ear heard nor has entered into the heart of man the great things that God has for those who walk uprightly. 2 Corinthians 6.11 says, O Corinthians, we've spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now in return for the same, if I speak as to children, you also be open. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Man, be careful what the world's trying to sell. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness and what accord has Christ with Belial or what part has a believer with an unbeliever and what agreement has the temple of God with idols for you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be be sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. In, In the Message Bible, it's It's quoted this way. Dear, dear Corinthians, I can't tell you how much uh, I long for you to enter the wide open spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. I'm speaking as plainly as I can and with great affection. Open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. You know, Paul wrote in Romans 8, there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who don't walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life, see, the covenant, the old covenant based upon the law, the enemy held the keys to death in the grave. The new covenant based on the blood of Jesus, Jesus holds those keys. And then he says this, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Wait a second. Whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Let me tell you the authority that you walk in to be free. The the authority that you walk in, don't be limited by any worldly affections. And I'm just telling you, I believe it to be literal. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm the head and not the tail. Above only and never beneath. Greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. I've created Christ Jesus for great works, so I'm going to walk in him. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. See, think about that. Think about the expanse that God wants to give your life. Because I'm telling you, that's the season that we're starting right now to enter into. You received that by faith? God, we thank you today for your word. God, we thank you for your promise. God, I thank you that the last 67 minutes, God, have been so rich and so full. And God, I thank you that we are not going to live under the, the limits of our flesh anymore. God, everything we put our hand to prospers, yet no weapon formed against us ever will. And God, I thank you now 
for a spirit of increase and overflow to come on every person here. Every person. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered in the heart of man. The great things you have for those who love you, God, that's us. God, we can't imagine, and God, we're going to start trying to. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to Guts Church YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Chano Trevino, the assistant pastor here at Guts Church. And on behalf of our leadership team, our staff, our church, it's our hope that this message met you right where you are. If it did, I bet there's someone you know who could use the encouragement of this message in their life. And you sharing it with them can make all the difference. The mission of Guts Church is to help people win. And you can be a part of that simply by sharing, or better yet, inviting someone to tune into Guts Church online with you every week. Take that next step to be a part of what God is doing right now in this moment in time by being committed to showing up, placing a premium on God's word, and receiving all that God has for you. You can share this message, gather your friends for services, make it a priority to make this the place you want to be. God has so much for you. I truly believe that. We love you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you soon.